So if you're sitting there running searches every day, hoping that your plum job's gonna land in your lap through Indeed or Google for Jobs or LinkedIn, are you missing a trick? Are you aware of the dark economy of jobs and most importantly, how you plug into them? So there's a popular statistic that says about 70% of all jobs never hit the public market. They're not advertised, they're not things you can search for, you're never going to know about them unless you're truly plugged into that organisation. So here I'm just going to run through some of the examples and reasons why, some you may know, some you may not have considered as to reasons uh, why a job doesn't get advertised, but also how you, the job seeker, could potentially shape your job search to plug into these things before they even hit the open market. Starting with number one, and this is probably one of the biggest reasons, internal mobility. Now about, this differs from business to business, anywhere from 50% through to as high as 85% of roles, all roles offered by an organization could land with somebody from the internal talent pool before even considering the external market. Uh, and this is because a lot of businesses believe in internal mobility and career development, but it could be upwards as well as sideways move opportunities for people to learn new things and take on new skills. Uh, it's quite admirable, obviously, for those businesses that are doing that. Uh, but when those roles come out, they're between one week and four weeks internally before they'll consider going to the external market if they don't have the people to hand. Um, but there are some businesses that also run their internal process at the same time as an external procedure. Those ones have got the highest risk of you getting the most frustrating feedback of, sorry, somebody internally has arisen and taken the job. Uh, the only way of finding that out is obviously when you engage on the process is to ask, has the internal procedure completed or is it running in tandem with the external? And then be prepared that because there is a high likelihood of internal people taking those jobs, that there is a very high risk to it. Um, most of the roles will be checked out by a recruiter when they're doing the uh, briefing conversation with the hiring manager and will qualify that point to ensure they're not wasting their time as well as potentially yours. Especially at the moment when there's fewer vacancies and we, the recruiters, need to ensure for our survival we're working on good quality work that is actually going to result in something. Okay, but. Worth checking out, if you, even if you're just engaging direct with the businesses, ask the question, has the internal procedure actually completed? Just so that you're aware of that circumstance, okay? Then number two, three, and four are similar because it acts around sensitivity, and but it's different forms of sensitivity. So uh, to give you an example, um, British Telecom, a business I've worked with for many, many years, uh, they had one of their most senior hires actually within their marketing function recently transpire. Uh, and the funny thing is, even the internal talent acquisition team wasn't aware of the fact that that hire was taking place. Not until the replacement had actually walked into the door and introduced themselves. Uh, and the reason being is it was a very sensitive hire. Uh, it was one that, if made public, could have potentially affected the share price of the organisation. So the executive committee dealt with it really on a need-to-know basis. Uh, and so ultimately, you, the job seeker, would never have seen that role. Whereas... Similarly, John Lewis quite publicly went out with a series of very senior hires, up to 300,000 basic salaries recently. I think most of them have been taken off market now because of the volume of applications they received. Um, but it just depends on how sensitive that position is and what their internal perception is as to if this was to hit the open market. Similarly, Revolut recently were hiring a UK CEO post just by a LinkedIn advert. So it's not to say all senior hires will be sensitive enough that they won't be made public. It depends on the perception by the business and their internal talent acquisition team or their executive recruitment team to say whether or not they what they think is going to be the most successful route to bring the right person to the job and consider the wider ramifications around the hire to that. The second point of sensitivity, and really point number three here, is around a replacement. Say a business has a senior level hire that they've made, but the person isn't working out, they're not quite to the level that they needed, they're perhaps not skilling up in the areas they need to fast enough, uh, they'll instruct uh, a headhunter or an executive search firm or something to deal with the recruitment sensitively, uh, not have an advert running publicly, and it'll be done through network and 
direct search stuff and a lot of research work to identify the right people and proactively approach on a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, because you don't want the incumbent necessarily finding out about it, but the business has got to hedge its bets and cover itself um, just in case that person doesn't end up making the grade and they need to do a replacement, but they need business continuity for that to happen. So that sort of hiring does take place and it's all completely off radar. Uh, and then the third one is sensitivity around an existing team. Now, I personally had this where uh, a very well-respected internal senior leader of quite a large workforce uh, was looking to move on themselves, but they didn't want to announce it to their team. They didn't want to upset the apple cart and upset anybody in that team. Uh, so they wanted to find the right replacement and then be able to softly break the news to show there was a continuity plan and that this person was somebody they're going to get on with. So all the hiring was done off radar, behind closed doors, uh, without anybody knowing. So again, that vacancy wasn't out there. And I handled that brief through a typical executive search mentality with the research piece going into the market to find the right individuals to engage. No advertisements being done at all because it wasn't appropriate to the search. Uh, to then draw that short list and a long list into short list together and then present forward to the client. So then number five, we're looking at advertising not being fruitful. Now, what do I mean by this? Now, if it's an area of the market that's over canvassed, uh, the supply doesn't meet the demand, uh, ultimately you're going to stick the advert out, it's going to cost you money, it's not going to deliver you the result. A recruiter typically knows whether or not an advert is going to give them uh, any inbound traction, any inbound success from that um, by understanding their market and the dynamics of that market. And there just are some roles that are better recruited without putting the hour plus time into properly structuring out an advert, doing a good job of selling the piece uh, in written format, and then all of the admin to actually put the advert out online. And to be fair right now, advertising can bring you a bit of a mixed bag of results. So sometimes you prefer to do it off radar and proactively approach people one-to-one, -one, uh, just knowing that your network is gonna be the thing that ultimately manages to fill that particular brief. Uh, and that time that you would put into the advert will be better spent invested in that network to engage with people. Then we're looking at number six, and it's a fast turnaround. Um, as I say, it takes time. Doing a decent quality advert and a good job of selling the client and the brief and the opportunity takes time. If you're on a short turnaround, 24, 48 hours, there's a contract brief that needs it really quickly done. An advert isn't gonna get you the sort of traction you need in the time frame that you require it. Realistically, for an advert, you, you're gonna want a minimum of a week for that advert to draw in a crowd, to get the right people's attention, give people times to get their CV updated if they're not actively searching, uh, and to support you in the search. It's not a be all and end all with advertising to actually get you the traffic you need. Uh, so certainly with contract recruitment, with really small windows, you're probably not going to bother with doing an advert just because it's not going to deliver you the result as effectively as you just reaching out to the people you know to get it done. Number seven is if you already know enough people. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, if you've got a really decent network in a certain space and you've got a hot list of people as a recruiter you're managing and you've got like 20 or 30 people within a specific niche that you know are good to go, hot to trot, really good for the position you're trying to hire, would you advertise the role? Would there be a need to advertise the role? Because you've effectively got a really decent long list already ready ready to go. Um, there isn't so much the need to spend time doing an advert to draw more people in. So there are occasions that recruiters get vacancies briefed to them and they just go straight out to their network and don't worry with putting the advert out. And this is why when those occasions occur, it's really important to be plugged in with the right recruiters within those verticals or specialisms that you're experienced in so that they can have you on those hot lists and reach out to you effectively. And then lastly, number eight, this is actually probably going to be a surprising one in the numbers behind it, but it's referrals. I bet you didn't know that it equates to roughly 40% of all external market hiring comes from referrals. People know good people. It's a recruitment phrase that every recruiter gets taught in really recruitment 101. So that's why we ask a lot for referrals because often if you're being referred to somebody, they're decent, they're good quality, they know what they're doing. Uh, nobody wants to refer somebody who isn't decent at what they do. So a lot of businesses will also listen to those referrals. And I've had recruitment happen where uh, a referral has come in to the business, no CV, no additional information provided, maybe a link to a LinkedIn profile to see something about the person. Uh, and then the interview's been requested like that, and it's straight in, done. A very quick piece of recruitment because 
the internal incumbent that's given that referral has already got credibility and track record with that business. So they wouldn't give a bad referral. They wouldn't recommend somebody who wasn't going to be good quality for that organization. That's why that statistic is so high, because it's a listened to channel. And there's a lot of companies out there that do quite rewarding referral programs. I've seen them in the thousands of pounds that they're offering their staff to refer good people in. Now, given all of this, how can you make use of it? Now, the number one and the 101 to this is really networking. Obviously, we see that a lot at the moment on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on in, the, in my newsfeed with people doing proactive networking. Uh, now, how do you plug into this? Um, you need to be thinking about how you're networking. Now, if you're out job seeking, the first thing you want to look at is probably draw up a list between 50 to 100 companies. Research those businesses to a reasonable degree so that you understand whether you're going to fit them. Because there's a lot of times you see things out there and people have got, uh, in high public eye, like Google and Amazon are two key examples that always come out of people's mouths. But are those businesses the sort of businesses that hire people with your experience and your skills? Do you come from the right industry background? Are the applied techniques that you're used to doing going to fit their organization? And I'll give you an example. If you're doing B2B enterprise sales and you're targeting to join Amazon Prime, what you're doing perhaps in account-based marketing isn't going to be so relevant to apply into Amazon Prime's approach to marketing to consumers. Uh, if you're an offline marketer, you're not necessarily going to be the ideal candidate when they're searching for somebody that perhaps is really good with programmatic and display and PPC. So you need to think carefully about what's the bias of the mentality of marketing here. And there are certain industries that overlay really nicely. So people that are in telecommunications, utilities, financial services can often migrate between those organizations. Uh, but also within that piece, and I'm, I'm talking about this from a, from a marketer's standpoint, um, but also you find that within retail as well. There's a lot of retail businesses that will actually say they like people from those other environments, especially if they're talking about CRM and thinking about the complexity of CRM, the scale of the databases, the sophistication of the data that underpins all that. There's a, there's a good overlap there. So think carefully about the type of organization you want to hit up. Uh, certainly in this market as well, I see a lot of it, I hear a lot of it. The appetite for hiring starts to shift and businesses go, I want to hire somebody that understands the dynamics of the market that we operate in. And so they start closing down to having uh, an open mindset to different people from different industries coming in uh, because they see it as a more risk averse type of hire. So when you're building that list, just be mindful about all those different organizations that will see benefit and value from the experience that you can bring to them. Then once you've done that and you've got that background, you understand why those businesses will see you as a valuable potential employee then look at networking with at least three people within that firm. And I'm talking about somebody that's perhaps more senior than you, peer level to you, that kind of level and are in units or divisions that are close enough to the business area that you, your experience is going to fit, that they will be aware if a brief is to arise in that particular space. Okay. And then also bear in mind, job titles can be ambiguous. A director grade in one business may be a managing director grade or a vice president within another one. So Try to broaden out your search terms to ensure that ultimately you're allowing for businesses having these differences in, in how they structure internally and how they name those job titles. Okay. Then, when you're connected with these people, think about what you're going to do. You're not going, have you got a job? I need a job. Can I have a job? Because you're immediately joining and asking for something. People don't tend to like that. Um, what you're going to want to look at instead is a give to get mentality. You're interested in the idea of sharing your knowledge, sharing your expertise, sharing your skills, showcasing those elements. In essence, you could also be looking at solving problems they're facing right now. You could start a conversation about something you've seen in the press that might be relevant to them and how are you dealing with that? I've got some ideas on this I'd like to share with you to showcase your knowledge and your expertise in that area. And then also translate that into thinking about content you put out into your network over LinkedIn so that you're always in the news feeds, always in the public eye around those things and demonstrating those subject matter expertise to the relevant organizations. There are searches that I've handled in the past, 
some quite high profile searches in the past in particular, uh, where the individuals that have come onto my radar have been there because I've found their opinion pieces, I've found their the, the blogs they've written, I've found when they've been picked up by things like Marketing Week or been on Adobe Summits or things like that, I've found them there and I've recognized that they've got this halo effect from those elements that demonstrate that they are thought leaders. They are people you should take seriously in that domain, in that area. And the businesses I've introduced them to have also seen value in those pieces for it. So don't be afraid of doing thought leadership, putting yourself out there and helping others. Because once you've helped others a few times, you'd be surprised how often they'll then be open-minded to helping you, okay? And then the last thing is optimize your LinkedIn profile. There's a, quite a few people I've been speaking to in recent weeks. It's surprising that they're not necessarily considering how to optimize the, the, the LinkedIn profile. I've done some videos on this before. I think my colleague Kate's done one before with walking through those pieces. Um, one of the key things as well is thinking about how do does your profile show up in a search response? And below your name, what is that headline that you've got? If you're using a fairly ambiguous headline or you're dropping your job title and you're just going with open to work or looking for a job or something along those lines, it is, it's not as enticing as somebody who's more specific about who they are, what they do, what value they bring. So um, with the space you've got there, you could probably do three job titles quite comfortably. Uh, and that's going to be a case of considering what are the job, if you're job searching, what are the job titles that you are interested in and fit your experience that fit with the industry. So uh, an example, if you're a digital marketer, you may look at head of digital marketing, head of performance marketing, uh, you may um, try something like um, a growth hacker if you're looking at more startup businesses or um, head of acquisition or something like that. Different ways that you can do it. You could also consider the fact that if you're a head of and you run a team of about 30 plus people, maybe there'll be a director grade in another business. So try the director job title in there as well. Um, you may recognize that certainly Americanized businesses will have the vice president title for, business, for stuff around that grade. That might be something you might want to consider putting in too. So um, just have a look around the market on people and different firms, different firms you're targeting as well. How are they targeting those job titles? And then try to echo that in yourself and how you use that headline space to be able to articulate effectively and make it enticing to the person who's running that search, looking for people on LinkedIn to connect with and network with about particular vacancies in that space. Okay, so hopefully this has helped. Um, as always, open to ideas from anybody or feedback. Drop something down below if you've got some comments or thoughts. If I've missed anything in any ideas around this or you want to share some experiences that you've had, please do make a comment down below. Um, drop us a like. It does really help with visibility. And with visibility here, we're, here, we're, we're considering how this information could help others in similar circumstances to you with their job search. So thanks very much everyone for watching. Really appreciate your time and have a good week.